So uh, as I mentioned, today's uh, webinar is going to go over all the different uh, architectural uses of gay beads. So uh, we're going to talk about the different types of Gabian mesh, including our uh, standard mesh, as well as custom mesh, uh, you know, how Gabian sizes work, uh, possible accessories, as well as uh, various architectural applications, and go into some detail on those. So there are several different types of Gabians um, that we offer. We have our Juraflex, which are the twisted wire mesh Gabians. Those are generally used in civil and erosion control applications. We do occasionally see them um, on our architectural plans, but it's very rare. Um, the most common for architectural gabions would be our Jura weld, either in our stock mesh or in our custom mesh. And then we also offer our Dura guard gabions, which are a polypropylene plastic that mainly would be used for saltwater applications. So with Jura weld baskets, um, our standard mesh size is going to be a three inch by three inch opening. Um, we have several different wire gauge and finish options with the standard, but um, the mesh size is consistent across all of our standard offerings. Uh, they're going to be assembled with uh, helical spirals uh, that you can see in the picture there at the joint, as well as coming with some preformed stiffeners. Uh, with custom mesh, we have the ability to specify, you know, what mesh size opening you would like, as well as different uh, wire gauges or wire thicknesses. And then we also have a lot of different other finish, op uh, finish uh, options on those. So the, the standard finish options we have and wire gauge combinations are an 11 gauge galvanized, which is gonna be a thinner wire. Then we have 12 gauge, that's galvanized with a PVC coating on top of that. That would generally be used with freshwater applications. And then we have a nine gauge galvanized as well as a nine gauge raw steel. Um, the raw steel is just an uncoated steel that's allowed to rust. We call those our desert gabions and are most commonly used in you know, more arid uh, conditions where there's not a lot of rainfall. On custom mesh, we can go um, you know, from one inch up to six inch in spacing and can do that in square or rectangular patterns. So we can do a two inch by four inch, one inch by six inch, or you know, two inch by two inch. And in addition to that, we can go from as thick of a four gauge, which is gonna be about 0.225 inches thick, all the way down to a fairly thin 13 gauge wire. Uh, we can offer these in raw steel, galvanized steel, uh, grade three or four stainless steel, grade three sixteen L stainless steel, uh, which is going to be the highest end uh, stainless steel um, in the industry. It's considered a marine grade stainless. And then we can also offer galfan, uh, which is an aluminized steel. Uh, on the sizing. The standard Durawell baskets, because they come out of the retaining wall side of the business, um, you know, the, the standard baskets are going to be dividing into uh, lengths of three feet up to 12 feet. Uh, the width is going to be either a three foot or four and a half foot, and the height standard is one foot, one and a half foot, or three foot. Um, but because all of our baskets are made to order, uh, we can do sizes outside of those standard sizes, no problem. Uh, it just has to be in three inch increments to keep an even uh, mesh spacing. And then with custom mesh, um, the spacing just needs to be an increment of that, whatever specified mesh size was given. And then, um, you know, one of the benefits of the smaller mesh is that allows you to use uh, smaller stone fill. So with a three inch by three inch square mesh, you're generally going to have a four inch to eight inch uh, sized angular stone fill. But if you go with a smaller mesh, that's going to allow you to use some smaller stone 
And then also if you're using a smaller mesh or a smaller mesh in conjunction with a thicker wire diameter, um, you can use rounded stone a lot easier. Um, we generally recommend the angular stone because the stone will actually interlock with each other and it doesn't put as much pressure on the face of the basket. But with the uh, thicker wire or smaller aperture where you're getting more support on the face, you can, uh, that's where you can get into using rounded stone um, as the mesh will hold up a lot better against that pressure. Uh, so as far as gaming and accessories go, um, all of our standard Durawell baskets will come with the helical spirals as well as um, the stiffener rods, which is the bottom left picture there. And um, you know that allows you to assemble the baskets fairly quickly. The spirals are going to be an inch and a half in diameter, and they have a three inch drop so that as you screw them in to the mesh, it's going to give you a connection at each mesh spacing. Uh, they're really quick to assemble. The baskets will come partially assembled with the sides already attached to the base. Um, with our custom baskets, uh, the custom mesh, those baskets are delivered completely unassembled. And uh, depending on the mesh spacing, uh, we'll either usually include in the quote either spirals or we will recommend hog rings if it's a, an odd size mesh spacing. And so with the hog rings, um, depending on the size of the basket, if you want to meet the ASTM strength standards, you need to use either a manual hog ring gun, which is the top left picture, or a pneumatic hog ring gun, uh, so that when the ring closes, it closes in a circular pattern. Uh, Strength-wise, the hog rings and spirals are going to be comparable from a uh, structural support uh, perspective. Uh, we do have uh, cases where even with our standard baskets, they our customers have asked us to have them delivered unassembled and have requested hog rings for assembly just because uh, you're going to get a little bit tighter fit at the seams. And so the aesthetics are going to be uh, a little more smooth across the face of your uh, gabion wall by having uh, just the hog rings instead of the spirals going down the entire seam. Um, as far as assembly help, uh, lid closure tools are for when you're filling your basket. Uh, it basically allows you to clip and pull down the lid so that you can stuff the basket filled or full with stone. And then the corner closure tool uh, helps whenever you have two baskets side by side. Uh, you can use the corner closure to kind of grab those uh, seams together uh, so that you can then secure them. Uh, with hog rings or tie wire or something uh, to that effect. And then the last item are gabion guards, uh, which is a piece of folded sheet metal steel uh, that fits over the diaphragm or the, the top edges of the gabion so that when you're loading the baskets, the rock as it's falling in is hitting that gabion guard and that dissipates the load throughout the basket uh, instead of you know running the risk of bending the basket and having to take time to straighten up those uh, dividing panels or the end panels as you're filling the baskets. So we're going to go into some of our architectural applications now. Uh, we're going to start out with gabion fences. Uh, so gabion fences, um, you know, in addition to just the aesthetics of them, they also offer a lot of um, structural stability just because you can go uh, fairly thick walls, uh, which provides sound dampening qualities as well. So you can see that top picture uh, is a fairly uh, thick gabion wall that was used to reduce uh, sound coming into the property uh, along a highway. And then uh, you can also use the cages and mix them in with you know, traditional wood style fences. So you can see a couple different uh, items here where uh, the cages were used as uh, the fence post, uh, just to kind of give you that stone element, um, but not necessarily to do the entire run and having to bring in a lot of stone. And then you have methods like the picture at the bottom, 
where the gabion basket is used in conjunction with wood. And so it kind of limits the amount of stone coming in, provides some contrast with the aesthetics of the look, and um, you know, reduces the amount of stone that you're having to bring in. It's going to decrease the, uh, you know, the support weight required if you're using wood to you know, get that extra vertical height. So, um, you know, there are a lot of different options as, as far as the finished look that you can go with. So as far as the sizing goes, most of our baskets, if you're doing an actual um, basket as the fence itself, um, those are generally going to be done in six foot lengths. And then as far as the thickness of the basket itself, with our traditional baskets, um, the thickness you generally don't want to go below nine inches because with a three inch by three inch mesh spacing, uh, it becomes difficult getting really good uh, fill so that you can't see through the basket with a four inch or larger stone if you have um, only nine inches or less than nine inches to work with within the basket itself. So some of the construction methods uh, you can see any time that the thickness of the fence or the freestanding gabion structure, any time the thickness is less than half of the height, you're going to need some type of internal support structure. Uh, we usually recommend, you know, with gabion fences going up to eight feet in height to have a support post planted uh, six foot on center. So, you know, that post is going to be planted in concrete, buried in the ground, and then going up, and then you would just slide the baskets down on top of those posts so that they go through the mesh spacing. And then the stone is filled around those posts, and that is what gives you that interlock with the uh, baskets themselves. Uh, one option you do have when filling a gabion fence, if you are trying to do a more narrow um, fence panel, but still want to have good um, coverage so that you know the baskets look full uh, you can use larger stone on the face and then fill in in the middle of the basket with smaller stone and so that larger stone on the face will keep the smaller stone from migrating out give you that finished look uh, it's also a good way you know to use higher quality more expensive stone on the face but not have to necessarily spend that much money on all of your fill material So with landscape walls, um, you know, there's a huge variety of ways that they're used. You can have a retaining wall where it's considered a gravity wall where you're actually holding back a hillside. Uh, generally, the thickness of that wall is going to be two thirds of the height. Um, you know, that can change with how steep the slope is on top, what type of soil conditions you have, but that's a, a good general rule of thumb. And then you can also use baskets uh, in a freestanding capacity as more of a, a divider or a screen wall. Uh, and then, you know, we have lots of projects where they're mixing those two applications to have common elements shown throughout the property. Uh, our baskets are also, uh, can be used as planters where you can actually build, um, you know, a gabion wall around the outside of the structure and then fill the inside with soil and have planters. You can see a vegetable garden there. Um, that was a project that we did uh, there in the middle picture. And then um, one other that element that's not really considered a separate item uh, is just how the baskets are used would be uh, curved walls. And that can be achieved a couple different ways. One of the ways you can do a curved wall is to have smaller length baskets so that uh, you're making small adjustments with the baskets as you're going around the curve. Um, and so that you don't have any huge gaps or anything like that. Um, you just kind of slowly move those baskets in a little bit as you're making that curve. Uh, the other option is you can, uh, you know, hammer in rebar or some type of support and bend the panels into the curve that you want and attach those panels to the rebar itself. Um, you know, that's gonna give you the, the most gentle slope uh, of a curve or of a curve. And, uh, you know, you can 
we can basically work with you on what those dimensions need to be and can have the facing panel be a little bit uh, smaller than the back panel if you're doing an inside turn or do the opposite for an outside turn. Uh, with benches, uh, those are standard gabion baskets. It's just that they are topped with some type of bench top. Um, you've got a couple different options. You can have a full length gabion where it runs the entire length, or you can see at the bottom uh, picture where you can actually have cubes that just act as support posts um, and have the bench tops on top. Um, those can be put in uh, several different ways. You can see you know, a couple options here on the pictures. Uh, we also have customers that have put in uh, flagstone toppers or um, you know other stone features that can either be set in place or uh, you can attach hardy backer, uh, just a concrete fiber board to the top of the gabion and then you know apply mortar or some type of um, adhesive to that hardy backer that'll allow that stone top to uh, adhere to and stay on top of the gabion basket. But, um, you know, it's really an op opportunity to be creative and uh, a lot of different options on that. For our gabion veneers, um, that's generally, uh, the majority of the time is going to be a custom mesh production, uh, just because it's usually you're trying to have a very thin veneer on type uh, on top of whatever structure you're adhering it to. And so it becomes a lot easier to have a smaller mesh with smaller fill and not be required to um, have nearly as much uh, fill being brought in and filled up against the structure. So that top picture is a stainless steel uh, project that we did in Bermuda and it had a two inch by two inch aperture mesh and used a thicker wire so you can see they're able to use a rounded stone uh, on that and also have a fairly thin veneer that was adhered to that uh, poured concrete wall behind it. As far as the attachment goes, uh, it's you know very similar to any veneer application. Uh, you know there are high strength plastic tie backs that can get anchored in. Uh, we've had some customers that have just put runs of you know, like a, a two inch thick quarter or a two inch wide, quarter inch thick uh, piece of steel along the inside of the baskets that then they screw in and anchor into the to the wall behind it. So, um, you know, a lot of different options on that. That's usually uh, decided in conjunction with a structural engineer, um, you know, by the customer during the design process. And then there are also uh, just general creative elements. Um, you know, the top picture uh, was done by a landscape design company that was built for uh, a Chicago Flower and Garden Show. And they were able to run piping and pumps and created a fountain uh, piece using our gabion baskets. Uh, the middle picture, uh, that is actually here in our office. That's in our conference room. And uh, we took gabion baskets to line the wall that we had and then had a custom uh, wooden top put on and used that um, for our TV and uh, in our conference room. And then you have just standalone structures that you can do. You can do uh, cubes, towers. Um, it's really a good way to kind of tie in those gabion elements that you might need for a retaining wall. Uh, perspective and have that tied in throughout the, the landscape garden or uh, interior applications, uh, you know, mixing in with internal or interior veneer panels or something similar uh, to that. Then we also offer uh, glass rocks and the glass rocks are made from uh, recycled glass and we have a variety of different colors. Uh, they can come anywhere from three inch up to 12 inch. Um, we generally just work with our customers on what size range they're looking for. Uh, probably the most common is like a three inch to six inch mix. Uh, and then the fill rate on those is calculated at 90 pounds per cubic foot. So, um, 
we can work with you to figure out how much glass rock you would need for your project. And then those glass rocks um, ship out in super sacks. So just in bulk bags on pallets, uh, we can fit up to about 2,200 pounds per pallet uh, when those ship out and they ship out by LTL, just like our Agapian baskets do.